Hey, so one week ago, Anthony posted this question on our Facebook group. The question being, how different is street epistemology from Socratic method? So here I am making a video to answer this question and give anyone who's interested a more in-depth overview of what is street epistemology. Now first off, if you have no idea what street epistemology is, here's a one minute video. I think, I think it's in this corner or maybe in this corner. That would help you. And for the rest of this video, I'm just going to assume you have watched it or have some basic understanding. So, Socratic method is a way to make an argument or to have a discussion by having the other person to think on their own. And you use Socratic method by asking questions or providing examples. If you want a more detailed explanation or a more better example, you can go to this website called SocraticMethod.net. Link also down in the description. And uh, I'm going to give you a simple demonstration with a conversation I recently had with, with my young cousin on topics of elementary school math. So I asked him the question, what is 17 plus 8? My cousin said 24. I said, hmm, what is 3 plus 5? He said it's 8. So I, then I asked him, what is 17 plus 3? He said it's 20. So I, I then asked him, what is 20 plus 5? Then he said 25. And then he realized it's, 20, it's not 24. 17 plus 8 is 25. Right. As you can see, the purpose in the conversation is to teach my cousin how to add. Instead of telling him he's wrong and provide him with the correct answer and how to get to the correct answer, which would be the traditional method of teaching, I asked him, the questions that actually require him to think on his own to get the answer. Yeah, and that's the Socratic method. And to answer our initial question, street epistemology is not different from Socratic method. It is a specific case of Socratic method being the topic is epistemology, or how do we decide whether something is true. But that would not be a complete answer. You see, Socratic method can be done in the classroom, it can be done in the court of law, uh, all of which are very useful, but as the name street epistemology implies, we are focused on when you do it on the street, <laughs> or in a park, or in a restaurant, basically in a more casual setting. And you, to do that, we facilitate the Socratic conversation by building rapport and through various conversation skills, like you demonstrate how you understand what people are saying. You reflect on how they feel. Basically, well, to be honest, there really isn't something I'm good at. <laughs> so, last, I want to talk about how street epistemology works. Of course, if you are here, you're probably curious about how it works against religion. So, the problem of religion is it promotes intuition as a way to know, because intuition gives people the delusion of control while they are being manipulated. This can also be reinforced with certain religious experiences. And that's where SE comes in. Your goal is to lead the believer you're talking to, or we call interlocutor, or in short, IL, just a philosophical term, uh, through their own thinking to recognize that intuition or religious, religious experiences is not a reliable way to know things. This is often done by presenting the outsider test of faith, which is one of the examples you can give in Socratic method. Basically, you say, if other religions use the same method to justify their belief, if their belief is incompatible with your belief, be it intuition or religious experiences in this case, is that really a reliable way to know? Of course, none of this work if the other person is not willingly participating and thinking on the question you are asking. I might make this sound easy, but to be honest, I'm just an apprentice at this point. People don't, usually don't. I, I just have terrible communication skills. And people also talk about how to use SE on other things like fortune telling or politics, quantum woo, alternative medicine and stuff. I think as long as the problem is in epistemology or again, how people determine what is true, it's gonna work. Of course, all the components of SE will work on their own in other um, 
much a wider variety of situations. So if you practice them, um, if you practice, for example, good communication skills, you can practice them through street epistemology. If you do that, it's going to benefit you greatly in other places as well. So that's all I have to say about street epistemology. I hope this video helped you understand, give you a better image of what it, street epistemology is. Thank you for watching. And if you think this video is helpful or you just want more people to see it, uh, go like, comment, and subscribe. And share, obviously. Bye-bye.